Hey pals, so today I'm going to be explaining to you how I got into Harvard, mainly by answering a few questions from you guys and then providing my stats at the end of this video if you are interested. So let's just jump right in. Hi, can you please tell me about the interview process and how you should proceed about preparing and answering them? It would be very helpful if you could make a video breaking down the interview process and what you want to do to maximize your chance. I don't think I actually need to make a whole video on this, at least for the Harvard interview process. In my experience, as someone who is accepted during the early action program, you apply to Harvard and then as soon as they receive your your documentation, so they find out your name, where you're from, they pick an alumnus that is close by and that person contacts you and then sets up an interview. This interview is very, very informal in a way that this person is not on the actual admissions committee. They're just somebody that happens to have gone to Harvard and they're going to come talk to you, fill you out, and kind of just write up their own report on if they like your personality, how you seem as a person. My understanding of the Harvard interview process is that this is a chance for you to get even more of your real life personality out there because other than your essays, Everything else in your application is completely quantitative. It's kind of hard to judge a, like a kind of a shitty person who happens to have really, really great stats versus an awesome person who might also have those same stats apart from the essays. But those essays, hopefully they are an accurate representation of you, can, can be a little bit different. Perhaps you write in a different tone than in which you speak or anything else like that. So the interview for Harvard is, in my experience, an opportunity for you to show your personality. So for me, I was approached by my local person and they said, okay, hey, we have to get these interviews in. I am available Monday through Friday. Which of these days would you like? And in my personal opinion, I think you should try to do the interview as soon as possible. Even though that might seem daunting, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out because for me, when this happened, I finished and submitted my application on November 1st at, I think, 10 p.m. So very, very close to the actual deadline. And I think about three days later is when I got the email saying, hey, I'm sorry, it's on f right now, it's Friday. Uh, but we need you to interview Monday through Friday next week, so if you could pick a time, that'd be great. And although that short notice might be terrifying, I personally recommend you do it as soon as possible because, one, you have a shorter amount of time to psych yourself out about it where you're thinking, oh my god, I'm going to screw this up. Just get it right away. But secondly, and possibly most importantly, I think going as early as you can shows that you have nothing to hide, that you don't need to spend a bunch of time curating this persona that you're going to present to your interviewer, that you are confident, professional, and just ready to go to Harvard and any other school that you would need to do an interview. Overall, I just recommend going as soon as possible to show eagerness, enthusiasm, and professionalism and confidence. So I opted to go on Monday. I said, um, I'm free every single one of those days. Even though this technically was true, I literally had nothing else to do. I recommend saying, unless it's something that you literally absolutely cannot get out of, I would say you're free every single day because that shows that you're flexible and that you really prioritize wanting to go to the school. So unless it's something like you have to go to your grandma's funeral or you have to go to your state championship game. Unless it's something major like that where it's really, really bad to miss it, just say you're available all the time, but express a preference. So as I was saying, I said, I'm available actually the entire week, Monday through Friday. However, I'm going to be in the city on Monday anyway, so I would prefer Monday. So this shows, in my opinion, that you're not being just, oh, whatever works for you, trying too hard in a way. By expressing a preference, it shows that you, know, you have your own opinion, you know what you need to do, but that you're also flexible. And again, hopefully the preference that you express is as early as possible. Luckily for me, I actually was going to be in town the day that I said, which was Monday, so this worked out great for me. So I had the meeting scheduled for 4 o'clock and I arrived at 325, make sure you're early to your interview, 
Maybe you don't have to be as early as I was, but I was very, very scared. I had nightmares two nights in a row before this that I was late, I missed it, and I screwed up the whole thing. For alumni interviews, at least for Harvard, again, I can only speak from experience from Harvard because that is the only admissions process that I went through. So don't clock me if this isn't true for like Cornell or Dartmouth or anything like that. But it's an informal interview, which means that you do not show up wearing prom gear, do not show up in a full suit, don't look like you're trying to be professional. I think the main thing is that you do not want your outfit to be noticed at all in any way. Whether, oh, she looks so sharp, or, oh, she looks really shabby. Do not wear something tight. Be as conservative as you can be, because, again, you don't want anyone to take any notice of anything that you're wearing at all. I went for a black turtleneck and a long gray skirt that went down to my ankles and then black boots. If you want more information on what you should wear to your interview, then I would go to the website. I'm going to link it down below. It's on the Harvard blog that was really helpful for me. So I got there. I had some some coffee. Actually, no, I didn't have coffee because I was a little bit nervous that I was going to be even more nervous than I already was. So I had a hot chocolate and some water. I sat there and I waited and I waited and the guy finally showed up and at first he walked in and didn't know who I was. At this point, this is when your interview begins. Before they even ask you a question, if they don't immediately recognize you, be the one to stand up and say, hi, my name's Alexa. Shake their hand. Learn how to shake hands, by the way. Do not have one of those weak, ugh, shake the hand the way that you should. If you don't know how, have somebody that's good at shaking hands teach you. Let him over to my table, and thus the interview began. All I really have to say about preparing for the interview process is to not psych yourself out too much. It's not like they're going to be drilling you. Think of it more as a conversation where they're trying to get to know you and you're trying to get to know them. And they're not looking for reasons not to like you. They're looking for reasons to like you. So don't think, oh crap, I'm kind of awkward, so they're probably not going to like me. Think, I'm kind of awkward. But I can make some funny jokes, so I'm going to make some jokes, which will give them a reason to like me. Does that make sense? Just listen to what the interviewer is saying, if they're giving you any statements. Try to be thorough in your answers, but do not have a can't answer. And so, if you're worried about not being able to answer some of the questions, I would just, again, go on that Harvard blog, look up questions that interviewers ask, and just practice like one night before, two nights before maybe. Don't go overboard though. Do not over prepare yourself because you're gonna psych yourself out and this is not like a test. You really can't fuck it up unless you're just already an awful person or you're already like boring. But if you genuinely know that you're not awful and that you're not boring, if you just answer the questions and are confident and bubbly and not like hunched over or shy or just meek, <laughs> you should be fine. So practice some of those questions beforehand. What were you going to say? But don't try to have too much of a canned answer because as I said before, the whole point of the interview is to see who you are as a person. So if you have rehearsed speeches for every question, it's going to not show the best side of you, which is the whole point of the interview. Honestly, that's all I really have to say about the interview process. Just don't take it too seriously. Read a couple articles beforehand, practice a few questions, make sure you're wearing something that's not ridiculous, and just go in confidently and enthusiastically. Just act like it's a conversation. Listen to them, be eager to respond, don't cut them off, just be decent. Okay, so this next question comes from the same person, and they say, Additionally, you may include your personal opinion on what to do if your school does not have adequate resources, such as AP courses, clubs, organizations, and other extracurriculars. And somebody else, whose name is Ariana Gamero Rodriguez, asks, What activities did you do to get in? And so I'm just going to answer both of these at the same time. So I actually... I'm very glad this person, the first person, asked me the question about what to do when you don't have stuff at your school because that's exactly what my problem was. In my school grades 7 through 12, there are less than 100 students. My graduating class is 11 individuals. <laughs> and so that small of a population leads to very small amount of resources. So the only activities, extracurriculars, etc. that my school has 
are girls basketball, boys basketball, volleyball, football, track, golf. Oh, and baseball and softball in the summer, but that's not really. So I guess technically eight. Then we've got speech, SAD, Students Against Destructive Decisions, FCCLA, yearbook, kind of Science Olympiad, but that's more... If you want to go to the Science Olympiad competition, then you sign up and you go. It's not really like a team thing. And FCA, which is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which is a religious organization that comes to the school, and it's not school funded because it can't be for church and state reasons. We also have one act. So that's about 10. And if you're someone that goes to a school like that, and one that doesn't have AP classes, where your highest level of math is Algebra 2 or non-credit pre-calculus, then it's a little bit daunting looking at, okay, I want to go to Harvard, I want to go to Stanford, I want to go to Yale, but all these other people have perfect AP exams. They have done the SAT subject tests. I didn't even know about the SAT subject tests until the summer before senior year because my school we don't do that nobody does anything like that most people in my school either go to the like one of the local colleges or they just go right into farming or the workforce there's really not that much of a push for higher education because right next to us we have three schools close by that are all 95 percent acceptance or higher and everybody goes there and i'm sure this is the same for a bunch of you so what do you do you maximize the opportunities that you have with you. For example, I took every hard class that I could. I took in junior year anatomy and physiology, even though I hated it. I have no interest whatsoever in anatomy and physiology. I am not planning on entering the medical field. Anything to do with bodies, yuck. I'm going to go into economics and law. So that actually answers one of the other questions. The person Ariana Gamero Rodriguez asked what my chosen major is. It is economics with minors in political science and women's studies and later a degree in law, just so you know. I would recommend taking as many difficult classes as you can. Take the hardest classes that you can access at your school, even if they don't contribute to your major. If you're faced with a choice between you take anatomy and physiology or you take Intro to Fabrics, which is a class that my school offers, take Anatomy. Even if, personally, you're more interested in fabrics, it looks more impressive to say, okay, well, this girl didn't have a lot in her school, but look, she took every single hard class that she could. For me, this senior year, I took every single class that I could, except for the only class that is available and required for seniors, which is Problems of Democracy, which is a seniors only class. Everything else I'd already taken. So senior year, I took a bunch of online classes and that's the next thing I wanna talk about, is once you've exhausted your resources class-wise, then I would, if you can't afford it, turn to online classes. Whether that's free ones that you can gain access to, college classes, AP classes, Center for Distance Education classes, if you have that, that's what I would do. As of the end of my senior year, I will have taken six college English courses online, two college Spanish courses, Intro to Psychology, AP Calculus Semesters 1 and 2, AP Envir Environmental Science Semester 1, plus two regular high school classes, but also online, which is Mythology and Folklore and Intro to Economics. So that is 14 online classes that I will have taken and completed by the end of my senior year. And that, I think, is a really big factor that got me into Harvard. Obviously, I haven't seen my admission information. I'm told you can see that once you get into Harvard, they show you your application, but I have not seen that. But it makes sense to me that somebody, that if you look at your application and you see, okay, this person doesn't have anything, but did they do everything that they could? Did they pick one activity, one or two, and excel in those activities. I was not in any of the school sports, but I happened to be in speech and one act, also in FCCLA and yearbook and science Olympiad as well, but my main activities were speech and one act. So for someone with limited activities, I would say just 
pick one or two or maybe three depending on your time and devote all of your energy into being great in that activity. So for speech, I was a state champion in extemporaneous speaking last year. I devoted so much time. I also placed sixth in impromptu, went to nationals for speech, and then won regional superior actor awards for one act. And one thing that the Harvard crew said when they did a visit to a local community where they came and talked with a bunch of other top tier colleges is that they just look for people that are able to maximize the situation that they are in and gain the most from it. So it's not did you go to Exeter private school or did you go to rural school that has 85 people in grades 7 through 12. It's what classes did you take? How well did you do in those classes? What activities were you in and how well did you do in them? Not just what, but how well. What were your options to choose from and how did you make those decisions and if that contributed to your overall success? One more thing that I would just like to touch on is if you have access to summer programs, whether that be summer camps, summer school, internships, anything like that, do those if you can. I went to a bunch of different camps from like my <laughs> entire life, but mainly 9 through 12. I went to band camp three times for jazz, which we don't have jazz band at my school, but I went to three jazz band camps. I went to three computer, no, four computer science camps. We don't have computer science class at my school, and so I supplemented that lack with those camps instead that makes sense. I also went to Spanish language immersion camp twice because we don't have in school Spanish past Spanish 2. And so if you can take advantage of those there are a bunch of scholarships that you can get. So like I went to summer at Brown also this summer for media psychology and you can get a bunch of scholarships for that. So if you cannot afford that I would look into scholarships or a GoFundMe. I actually used a GoFundMe to get into Summer at Brown because I was accepted, but we couldn't afford the $5,000, and so I did a GoFundMe. And so, yeah, those are my main tips right now answering those questions. If you have any other questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments below, and I will make a part two. If you have any pressing questions about me, if you just want to know about me, I mean... I'm fun. <laughs> if you want to know about me or anything about the Harvard admissions process, what else I did to get into Harvard, just leave that in the comments below. If you want to know my stats really quickly, I'll just let you know. I did not take the SAT subject tests because I believed that my application was fine without them and proved to be so. Um, not trying to brag. I'm just, yeah. You know, you, that's why you're watching this video. I took the ACT and I got a 36 in reading, 36 in English, 35 science, and 33 math. That math section, let me tell you. GPA 4.0 unweighted as well, rank 1 out of my class. So if that was in any way helpful to you, there you go. And if again, if you have any other questions, make sure to leave them in the comments and I will make another video shortly. Okay, so that completes this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this really helped you out with navigating the admissions process to Harvard and other top tier universities. I am going to be posting more Harvard content, so if you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because you don't want to miss the Harvard Q&A Part 2. You don't want to miss updates as I get financial aid, as I get other scholarships, etc. You don't want to miss out on that. So if you want more information, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. I also make videos on media makeup, activism, and art. So if you're interested in those topics, then I would also subscribe. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Until then, ciao.